Thank you, Jesus. Shabbat Shalom, y'all. <laughs> it's so good to be here. If you notice, we have no projector. You're welcome. No. <laughs> we, we are in the process of trying to fix all of that. So hopefully we will have that done by next weekend. So nobody freak out. There's a reason. Unless you want to look back there and find the words. <laughs> and the Bible verses. We're going to have to start bringing our Bibles. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, my God is awesome, and I, He's so great to be praised. I'm being kind of funny, but it, I know this is a serious moment as well, but we can have fun. We can yes. have fun. Amen. Um, just worship with all of your heart. That's what we're here for. We're here for Him. We're not here for anyone else, anything else but Him. This is His appointed time. Hallelujah.
without music. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only You are Hallelujah. great and greatly to Hallelujah. be praised, Heavenly Father. Glory and honor and power belongs to you. Glory and honor and power. Hallelujah.
we worship you, we magnify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the reason we're here. your hands upon us today, God. We are nothing without you. There's not a song that can be anything without your anointing. There's not a musician that can be anything without your anointing. 
There's not a message, there's not a sermon, there's not a prayer that can amount to anything without you, O Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Come on, church. We need to recognize that we're in the presence of the King of Kings. We need to recognize, hallelujah, that He's here. says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. One of the few places that when you read it, it just doesn't feel right until you go back to the original Greek and the is is not there. So you have to understand that God is everywhere. He feels the universe. David said, if I make my bed in hell, he's there. If I lift myself to the highest of heavens, I'll see you face to face. You're everywhere, Lord. So what does the scripture mean where the spirit of the Lord is? The connotation is basically where the spirit is Lord. You see, it's placed back on you. It's in your hands. Where, he is, where is he in your life? Where is he in your hands? Because when he's Lord of everything, amen, then there is an amazing liberty in the presence of God Amen. That will overwhelm you. And then when you stand in the presence of God like today, when you stand in the presence of God like today, you won't have any problem. You will not have any problem loving Him and magnifying Him. 
As a matter of fact, it will become a passion for you. It will become something that you long for. From the time you get up on Saturday morning to the time you come into the presence of the Lord. Where the presence of the Lord is Lord, then you will find your liberty. Praise God. You love the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, young people, for worshiping. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for worshiping. Hallelujah. We set the example. Amen. We set the example. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. As our First Lady Sister King mentioned, uh, we don't have these things on the wall like we normally have. Uh, started out being a light bulb change, and it ended up being a whole system change uh, because that's what we need. And uh, I honor our pastor and his wife for, uh, for desiring to do it right. Amen. I'm excited about the changes. You see, we found several years ago in the political realm, we, you know, they talked about change, but it wasn't good change. So today, I'm talking about a good change. Amen. I'm talking about a change within me. Within me. I can't talk about you, but I can talk about me and the change that needs to happen within me. I'm excited about it. Amen. And hopefully you see it within yourself. Everywhere the Lord went, he says, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. While he was walking on this earth, he would walk up to a situation, and he said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he would reach down to a lame man that has never walked in his life. And he would begin to walk and jump and run and worship. He walked into a situation. He says, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I need all of you to get out, you know, because you don't believe, you, you don't understand the situation. She's just sleeping. And she raised the daughter that had passed. Raised her from the dead. Today, I want to say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. And where the kingdom of heaven is, there will be no sickness. Think about it. There'll be no pain. You, won't, yeah, they're, they're, you can't exist. They, though, these things cannot exist in the presence, amen, of our Lord. They can't exist. And I'm desiring that today. I'm desiring that day. Do you ever get the feeling like you're just, you're, you're in a place where you don't belong? I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about life, work, you know, the world. Amen. These things you just, there's sometimes you just don't feel like you belong here. Why? Amen. Because I belong. Amen. I have citizenship in a different location. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to go before the Lord in prayer, and I did not get to uh, talk to S Sister Willis today about Trampas, uh, but I, I think there still needs to be some prayer in that situation. And uh, would like to also uh, ask you to pray for Sister Corin as she is homesick today. Um, I believe... I believe the um, Tuckers are home. I, I don't know how many of them are sick, uh, but it's very, very unusual for uh, Brother Tucker not to be here. Amen. So he must be really sick. So uh, uh, let's pray for these. I don't know of any, anyone else 
And uh, the list that we normally have up, please remember them. Uh, the youth, uh, my mom uh, in California, uh, our pastor and his wife, the things that, uh, that we are uh, coming to, the changes, the, uh, uh, some of them are struggles, but you understand without, without the struggle, there's no battle, there's no victory. Without the battle, there's no victory. Without, without the struggle, uh, there's no growth. Amen. Um, and so today, uh, we just want to lift them up. We just want to lift them up today in prayer. Amen. And uh, uh, yes, did I say a hand? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's keep the uh, Carlson family in prayer. He's my buddy. Amen. I love him. Love his spirit and attitude. Yes. Amen. Let's remember the Prathers. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes, amen. Let's remember our country and, and all of the things that is going through. We as children of God, uh, as the elect, understand that the government is not the answer. Uh, hopefully you don't have that uh, that idealism in you, but we do want to pray for our country and the situation. Uh, it has turned us back on God, and, uh, and there are consequences to that. And so uh, we, as the church, want to lift up the leadership. I don't care if you like them or not. You need to lift them up and let the Lord, uh, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. So that's, that's not for us to pray for uh, or pray against. It's just like, God, have your way. Yes. Amen. Amen. The Wednesday night Bible study that is, uh, uh, that is uh, going on with Brother, um, yeah, Brother Dan. So uh, let's pray for that. Um, yes, sis. Our sister Amy. Thank you, and brother. She said at 8 32 to pray for Shirley. Talk, to, talk into the mic, sis. Oh, she said to pray for Shirley and her family. Her son just recently committed suicide. Oh, my goodness. And she is a believer. Oh, and then, my goodness. And then oh, yet Lord. today at, at um, 8 53, she texted me and said, Yes, please pray for the young man named Mike. He tried to end his life yesterday. He is my a son's friend and also the son of an old friend of my childhood days. He doesn't know Jesus. Pray without ceasing. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Someone take that mic, please. You could also pray for my son, Michael. We'll just keep him covered in prayer. He needs yes. a physical touch. Thank yes. You. Hallelujah. Thank you, uh, Brother Chris. We've been trying to get this going. And, and uh, um, so it's awkward. Uh, it's awkward when somebody hands you the mic when you're not used to holding a mic. Uh, but it's necessary for people to hear you in the, in the auditorium here, and it's also necessary for the people to hear your prayer request or your praise report online. And so this is something we've been trying to do. So that's what, that's what happened there. And thank you, Brother Chris Oaks, for uh, stepping in and doing that. Uh, we've been trying to do that, but it's just sometimes... You got it said before they can get to you, and, uh, and so it's just kind of awkward. So uh, just know that that's what we are trying to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Say it again. <laughs> Pray for my grandma. Her leg is wore up. She thought she had a bird crop, but it came back that she doesn't. We don't know what's wrong. So this is my grandma. Yes, yes. Those, the, Rhonda Whitaker, amen. Yes, God bless you. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Let's do these today. I just want to praise God. <laughs> I could not be here Monday night for prayer because I had a new client 
and I sat in the ER with her for over four years. Pray for her. Her name is Patsy. God used me, and she got yeah. saved right in the ER. <laughs> so praise God for that. Hallelujah. But, yeah. And Glory. Um, I'm going to be with her starting three days a week and uh, just pray that God uses me because she needs, obviously, taught and so that um, God would lead her to the right church and so yes. she'd just fall in love with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Brother Chris. He'll, he'll be in good shape by the time we do this. Uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll end up having two mics out. Praise God. Yes, he is in shape. A lot better than mine. Hallelujah. How you like? I want to go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Can you stand with me today just one more time? You have been so patient and, uh, and loving the Lord and worshiping Him. Let's take just a moment to take every one of these needs before the Lord. Would you do that with me, Heavenly Father? You're an awesome God. I just give you awesome praise today, God, with everything that is within me, Lord. I magnify you. I lift you up. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive the glory and the honor and the power. Hallelujah. Belongs to you. Belongs to you, O oh Lord. <clears throat> so glad that you have surrounded us in this place. So glad that you have surrounded us, Lord, with your presence and with your Shekinah glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us realize what you're doing. Let us realize what you desire to do. And God, within every heart, every life, oh my God, put your hands upon my mom today. Hallelujah, and Rob in California. God, put your hands upon their lives. Hallelujah. Touch the praethers in the decision that they have to make today, God. Hallelujah. Touch Michelle today, God. God, the needs within that life. Hallelujah. And that family, Lord. Hallelujah. We ask you, God, to have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. I can't do anything but fail lest I'm in your hands. Hallelujah. Lest I'm in your presence. I can do nothing on my own today. Help me, Lord Jesus. To realize I need you. I need you. The very breath that is in my lungs, hallelujah, are ordained of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I understand, Lord Jesus. Uh, there's a place that the church needs to be today, God. But we lift up this country. We lift up this country, the leadership of this country. God, put your hands, uh, hallelujah, protection upon the elect. Put your hands of protection uh, upon your people, Lord, uh, and help us today to realize, God, that we are the salt. We're the very thing that is keeping your wrath off of this nation, off of this earth. And today, Lord Jesus, once again, I pray, God, hallelujah, if it be your will, if it be your will, draw of men, draw more men, draw more men and women and children, Lord to your presence. No man comes unto the Father except the Spirit would draw them. I pray today, God, that there would be a drawing. Hallelujah. In this day, in this age. Hallelujah. And help us, Lord, to be that which produces the kingdom of heaven on earth. Oh, God, help us to be that which produces what you desire to do in the midst of of your people today. Oh Lord, oh Lord, in your name, Jesus, in your name, Jesus, my God, my God, my God, hallelujah. Can you just entertain the presence of the Lord for just a moment, for just a moment? Oh my God, my God. Let every soul under the sound of my voice today have an unction and an urging. Hallelujah. For the things of the Spirit. Oh, God. Help us to feel the urgency of the church. Hallelujah. Lord, to be all that you want me to be. Surround me today, God, so I can walk in your spirit and walk in your presence so I don't fulfill 
the desires uh, of my carnal man, of the natural man, but I fulfill the desires of Almighty God. We have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Help us to perpetuate that mind, to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Until we come to the stature, the understanding and the fullness of who you are. The church said amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the most high God. Thank you for praying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. All right. You know, I was looking over here at the children when we were uh, worshiping and I couldn't help but admire um, their humility and uh, their willingness to, uh, just like Jesus said, become as one of these, uh, have the faith of a child. And sometimes in our adulthood, we're so hardened, and we um, we just like to sit like a bump on a log or a stick that will not bend, but these children, notice their behavior. Notice how they prostrated themselves without being led, and they just become and came humbly before the Lord, and I think we could all learn something from that. And we sing, surround me, O Lord. Surround me, O oh Lord. Let your presence uh, fill this place. It brings to mind the, the scripture where the prophet Elijah is in the, in the city, and some of you can uh, uh, relate to this. And They were surrounded on all sides by enemies, but yet the enemies were surrounded by the armies of the Lord. And we love singing things like that, and we love believing things like that, and it's the truth. But more often, we don't come in the right position, the correct posture, and posture ourselves before the Lord so He can surround us. Because the Lord a lot of times is saying, yeah, I feel all things and I'm right here, but we're trying to go over here and over here and, and say, okay, now, Lord, you follow me. No, God's here. You posture yourself in the position where you can be surrounded by Him. Amen. 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 There's a good, beautiful spirit of the Lord in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Do we have announcements? I want to look here, but there's nothing there. <laughs> Bring them up. All right, that's it, none. <laughs> Quick question, are we having the carry-in? Uh, I know it, nothing has really been talked about. Okay, okay. If you brought something, great. If you didn't, great. There is a carry-in. It's the first of the month carry-in um, that we have. Of course, it slipped my mind. Sorry, it slipped my mind. I think we probably announced it, but um, I totally forgot. So, you want to stay for that? Great, awesome. Do that. Uh, enjoy one another. Uh, we'll have plenty because there are people who make food for four and five families. 
<laughs> Literally. I know it because I see it. <laughs> like, oh, we, we brought everything you need. Thank God for people like that. Because those of us that drop the ball and forget, well, it makes up for it. <laughs> All right. Men's breakfast. I can't see that very well. That writing is so tiny. What date is that? December the 12th. And that's, that's at Amaletti's in Kokomo. I think Amaletti's... I think Amaletti's is by, um, if, it's, if it's still there, it's on uh, West Jefferson Street where Lord John's Tacos used to be. Um, it's a really good place. Uh, I haven't been there in years, but I enjoyed it when I was there. That's over towards the Forest Park Plaza um, around there. And I can't see that either. It's a community blessing dinner and clothing giveaway, December 28th from 1 to 4 p.m. Please see Sister Bobby and Crystal for needed items for the dinner. Awesome. All right. Ladies Fellowship, December 19th at 10 a.m. Stay tuned for details. Is that it? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bible study with Brother Dan Winters Wednesday night at 6.30. Monday night prayer meeting from 6.30 to 8. That's all. All right. That's all, folks. I'm glad that uh, we've got somebody who doesn't preach in the announcements. Thank you. If I'd... <laughs> little joke on myself. <laughs> Make uh, ministers will make a message out of anything. <laughs> oh my goodness! Praise God! We got through that fast. That's awesome. We're gonna give unto the Lord right now. We gotta move along. We got. We're gonna give unto the Lord. And uh, remember, your tithes and offerings are important. It is God's portion. As we said last night. Tithing matters. Offering is on top of tithing after it, but tithing is the first fruit. Abel brought the firstlings of his flock, and Cain brought an offering, but God had respect unto Abel because Abel understood God's portion. The first fruits. God wants your number one. That's why he said, have no other gods before me. Right? Money's not our God. The economy's not our God. Any other thing we can make an image out of is not our God. But you can give on Cash App at Money Sign Arc Peru, um, and then on PayPal, www.paypal.com slash paypal.me slash Arc Peru. And those are all found on our beautiful website, www.revivalcenterperu.com. That's all one word. And if you've given there before, you know how to find it. And just keep doing the same thing. We thank you, and we bless you, and we honor you because uh, you understand and that you, you're faithful. And God will bless you. He will. He really will. That's not why we give, but he will bless. It's in his nature to bless. It's in his nature to give you good things. He's a good father. And he rewards faithfulness. It's, it's in His law. You will reap what you sow. Whatever it is, whatever seeds you sow, it's going to produce after its kind. Amen. So if you, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap so sparingly. If you sow bountifully, there will be a reaping bountifully. Because when you give, when you give, it's a spiritual thing that happens. You know, God takes that seed and he does with it what he wants. Okay? You don't have to worry about putting sunshine on it and rain. You already planted it. It's a spiritual happening. And God says, it's mine. I'll take care of it. Now watch me work. So thank you so much for giving. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, 
the Messiah, I just pray a blessing on these people. You said to cast our bread upon the waters, and not many days it will return. And if we do it, it will be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And men will give into our bosoms. And you will open up the windows of heaven. And all manner of blessings and fruit and favor will come because we were faithful with that which you have given us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we just thank you that we are able to give, that we have been created to give as you give. And we just trust you with this seed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeshua HaMashiach. Yahweh's salvation, or Yahweh has become salvation, and the Messiah, or the Anointed One, or the Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we are going to, and I'd like to ask, I'd like to ask uh, Brother Corn and uh, Brother McClay to help me out here. Um, we're going to we're going to do something. That when you do this, this is one of the most unifying, powerful, soul-cleansing, heart-cleansing, body-cleansing things you could ever do. You understand, when God instituted this into His kingdom and He gave it to His disciples, it wasn't just something that you do as a symbol. There is so much more. And when I understood what exactly takes place when we partake of the, the bread and the wine, the blood and the, the, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, it changed my, my thinking. It changed everything uh, about me. And I'm still learning. And I always wondered... And, and tradition, traditionally, I saw a lot of churches do this once a year. But the Scripture says as oft as you do it. It doesn't say you have to do it once a year. It says as oft as you do it. And I believe when the, the apostles, the disciples, the people of God came together to break bread, to have prayer, to fellowship, they did this. They took communion. It's the communion of the body of Christ. And the Scripture says that on the night that Jesus was uh, to be taken, He gave thanks. I want you, I want one of you to hold up one of these and the other to hold up the other one. The whole thing. He gave thanks. We thank you for this body and blood of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, our Messiah, our Lord. And Father, uh, you said that you blessed it. So we ask you to bless it. And we lift up this cup and this bread to you, Lord that it will become, not in transubstantiation, but in consubstantiation, that the living presence of the Lord Jesus Christ will be in, under, around, and all throughout this bread and this wine, symbolic of your broken body, sim symbolic of the stripes that you took, and the seven ways your blood was shed in that crucifixion that you endured. So when he took it, he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And then he lifted up the cup. And he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. And this do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. We do this in remembrance of him. And we do remember his death until he comes. His stripes were for our healing. 
his body bruised and hung on a tree. And the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of all of us and then shed his blood and gave us life. And this is why we do this. We are remembering your part of the body, my part of the body, the blood of Jesus in me, the blood of Jesus in you coming together and remembering him until he comes. In Jesus, Yeshua's name. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this like we normally do. We'll start from uh, this side over here. And you'll come around, get your elements. And I want you to wait because we're going to partake of this together. Put on the song, please, if it works. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I got to explain this. Okay. These nifty, thank you, Sister Marjorie. Thank you so much for the hands that prepared this. These nifty sealed containers over here uh, with the wafer and the, the, that is juice. It's not alcohol. It's not wine. The wafer's on top. You pull out the little uh, plastic cover and you can get that. And then, the, of course, pull off the other cover, and then the juice is underneath. Those came. It's all juice. Over here is wine. It's kosher wine. It's not pleasure wine. But it is, nevertheless, the fruit of the vine. And... Uh, so you have options. This is wine. But everything in these little sealed cups with the sealed wafer, that is, that is juice. And wine on my right, juice on my left. You have options. It's already been presented to the Lord. We had, a mira we had a miracle last time we had communion. I won't really go into that, but uh, <laughs> I heard about it. <laughs> it was only God. It was only God. And that is a testament to the power of, of this act, this act we're doing. When we invoke the presence of God, his, his, on this and in this act we're doing, this spiritual happening that we're physically uh, doing, it's like baptism. What baptism is for the sinner, communion is for the saint. It's a physical action with a spiritual experience in, uh, attached to it and a spiritual result. So remember, on my right, wine. On my left, juice. And if you have to help your children pull the little tab and get into, get into it, there's, it's pretty simple to do. You just got to get, get a hold of that little cover on top of the, the other cover and pull out that that wafer unleavened bread amen the cup of Christ thank you Jesus I raise in all each drop of life he dearly bought I bow my head and break is not dead
do this, I want you to keep in mind that you are fellowshipping with the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the communion of the saints. He didn't give this to the world. He gave it to us. He gave it to us. Amen. There are certain things that are sacred and reserved unto God's people, and this is one of them. So when you do this, remember that He took your sins, that He took stripes, that He shed His blood for you, that He bought you back from bondage, from uh, death. He did what you couldn't have done. I just want you to take this this bread and crush it in between your fingers. The scripture says not a bone of him was broken, but he was badly bruised. His skin was ripped open. His muscles were exposed. And he was hung naked. I want you to partake with me. Partake of the body. Thanking the Lord while you're doing this. And I want you to hold your, your wine up, the blood. It's not the literal, actual blood. But the water you go down in baptism is not literally the water of heaven. When the name is applied, that's when it happens. So, Lord, we thank you for this blood, this blood of the new covenant. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for making us worthy to receive of your cup. And we drink it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Drink the blood, the wine. And with his stripes, you are healed. With his stripes, you are healed. I'll rejoice. Come on, we should be worshiping right now. Oh, thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless your holy name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that the veil in the temple was rent. Thank you, Lord, that you broke down the middle wall of partition between us, slaying the enmity and thereby making peace. Thank you, Father, for uniting us with the tree of life. Thank you for being the bridge between heaven and earth. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now we speak the blood against deep vein thrombosis and any effects of COVID-19 or Omicron, or any other variant that the devilish people of this world can come up with. We speak the blood of Jesus Christ against it, and we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Hallelujah! Any flu, any sickness, any disease, any sinus infections, leave right now in the name of Jesus Christ because of the blood that was shed on Calvary's tree.
muscle spasms and back problems and L5 vertebrae and every back injury in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your healing virtue begin to restructure, reconnect, fix the nerves, Lord. Fix the vertebrae, Lord. Fix them, Lord. Fix the discs in the name of Jesus. No more bulging discs. No more liver failure. No more kidney infections. No more inflammation. In the name of the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you for the work of the Drive out depression. Oppression, suppression. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, with my mouth I speak light. I speak light. The child suffering from anxiety. You are her and his peace. Amen. And we declare peace. And we loose the captives free because of what you did on Calvary. The captives have to go free. The dead have to live. Those that cannot breathe have to breathe. The blind have to see. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, with thanksgiving and praise, I'll honor you in my whole life through the, all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. You feel that in here? I didn't just hype the atmosphere. No, he's here. Thank you, Lord. One of the most sacred things you could ever do in the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. All right. Thank you so much. If you did not get, I, I, I think everyone did, but if you did not, if you know some people in your life whose heart is inclined towards the Lord and they didn't get to participate in this, take some with you. Take some with you. Uh, take some to Brother Rick. All right? Awesome. Amen. All right, we're going to dismiss our children today. We need to move right along here. Kindergarten, nursery, preschool, all those ages, uh, you are dismissed. And that's right, since Sister Anna is currently feeling ill, currently, we, we proclaim her healing. We proclaim she's whole, Brother Tucker's whole. Oh, it's right there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The kids are whole. Um. Their class is going to be with Sister Bobby as well. And then we have a preteen teacher as well. And then the youth are also dismissed. Fifteen years of age and older. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, Lord willing, I won't, I won't preach long today. <laughs> Lord willing.
I'll just say what needs to be said and get out of the way. All right. Amen. Thank God. You know, phones are good for one thing. They, I've got a couple Bible apps on my phone, and, and, and I can have something pulled up, and I can have a note that I need to look at, and it can be right there. Well, I have a notepad right here, and I have a Bible right here. So they're good for one thing anyway. This thing is annoying, though. They, th this thing is literally listening to my every word. I was, I was, I'm serious. I didn't even push the button, and I, I'm, I'm going down the road, and I'm listening to an audio yesterday in the truck um, in my job, and I'm listening to an audio of a, of a minister um, who had an, an encounter with the Lord, and uh, we also got the book. It came with the book. It was a three-CD uh, set off of uh, Sid Roth. Um, Ivan Tuttle's his name, and uh, this thing is saying, I did not understand that. I did not understand that, and, and I'm watching. I was, I was driving, but okay, so the phone was in front of me. <laughs> I wasn't reading the phone or anything, but I'm, 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 I'm listening to this in my earpiece, since I have to have an earpiece in. It's a Bluetooth earpiece. And, it, and it's, it's recording what the CD is saying into the search box. It's like, what are you doing? I didn't ask you to do that. Well, these things are listening. I think they're, they're, they're keeping a database of everything I say so they can try to <laughs> use it toward me later. I'm really surprised I haven't been put in Facebook jail for some of the things I've said on Facebook um, regarding the wicked rulers of this world and I mean my goodness they, they make uh, hate speech out of simple pictures of a flower coming through a crack in the sidewalk <laughs> and say this goes against our policy and standards these things are, are crazy but they're good for one thing and they still allow us to have a bible on there uh, and luckily I got a I got a strong concordance on my Bible, too, so that helps out. If you have your Bible, say amen. amen. All right. Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis, the first chapter. And we're also going to go to John 20 and 22. But Genesis, the first chapter, verses 1 through 3. It's familiar. You know this. You heard this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, and it became void. In some translations, if you were to read that in the original, it became void. It was uh, not that this was a first creation of the earth, because the earth had been around. It's a recreation. The earth had become uh, a formless void. It was a mess. It was chaos. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. What did God do? He said, let there be light. He did something. And I'm going, I'm going to get to, to that. And I'll explain where I'm going with that. Into the chaotic darkness... And there was light. And it is my belief that if you, if you did a further reading of that passage, that the light that he created, because the scripture later on says that he created all things through Jesus Christ. They were for his pleasure, his purpose. So all of creation was created by Jesus Christ. And through Jesus Christ. So when God... Yahweh spoke in the very beginning into that, cha that chaotic cauldron of water and everything, all the elements. He said, let there be the Word. Let there be light. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. 
So I believe when he said, let there be light, he said, let the word go forth into the chaotic cauldron of, of, of all that mess, and light was. And all it took was him to exhale and speak the word, the light. And there was creation. John 20 and 22. John 20 and 22. I'm nearsighted, so that is a little blurry back there. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. It says unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Well, they didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost or baptized with the Holy Ghost until uh, Acts chapter 2. And, and this, of course, was after his uh, crucifixion as well. And, and they hadn't been baptized with the promise from on high. But notice he breathed on them. And said, receive you the Holy Ghost. And I want to preach on this subject today. Hopefully it's not for a long, 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 extra long time. Because y'all know I can be long-winded. I can make reading the scripture 15, 20 minutes easy. And I'm like, how do I do that? I, I don't get it. I have to work on it. I want to preach on this subject. All that God has to do is breathe. All that God has to do is breathe. And I really feel like this message is for a specific person. And if you're looking uh, at us, if you're watching online, if you're here, I want to let you know all God has to do in your life is breathe. So, Father, have your way. Let me exhale the word of God. Let me speak light into some chaotic darknesses. Let me speak light into some confusion. Let me speak light into the anxiety some people feel. Let me speak light into the prison that's dark for some and they can't find the door out. Let me speak light. Let the oracles of God proceed forth out of my mouth. Let my tongue be the pen of a ready writer. Make my lips lips of clay and touch your people today. Do more than that, Lord. Transform every cell of their DNA. Transform them completely holy into your image. And let something happen in their lives that they will walk away and say, surely the presence of the Lord was in this place. Surely the angels of God ascended and descended upon this place and in me. And there I will never be the same. Let that be what happens in this place today. That we will walk away never the same again. In the name of Jesus, all that God has to do in your life is breathe. In the scene of Genesis chapter 1 that Moses writes that he, and I believe he received this when he was, you can be seated in the building. Uh, when Moses was writing Genesis, I, I, I'd like to imagine how Moses felt when he was watching all of this this take place when God was showing him, when he pulled him aside into uh, the glory of God and showed him the creation of the world and gave him the uh, elements of the tabernacle and he showed Moses everything that had happened prior to uh, what had gone on in his life. I like to try to put myself in the position of Moses and wonder just exactly what he was thinking. How he may have felt when he was watching all of this take place, the creation of the world. And, and, and it brings to mind other scriptures and it, and it causes the wheels, so to speak, to start turning in my mind. And when I mentioned in the beginning of uh, when we were reading into the scripture that I believed, and I, I will stand by this, that when God said, let there be light, the first light that went into the chaotic darkness was the word. 
And then I'm reminded when Jesus took the disciples up on the mountain where he was transfigured and Moses and Elijah were standing there talking with Jesus and telling him of the purpose of his life and what was to come and what he was to do. What exactly did Moses see when he was in this mountain and God was showing him all of this? And why did he write that before there was a sun and before there was a moon and before there were stars, before anything was separated, God said, let there be light or I believe let there be the word. Or perhaps if, if it if it wasn't, then Moses couldn't have stood with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration and, and talked of his purpose and what God was doing, going to do through him and accomplish through him and his life. So I believe that this light in here was the Word. But I came to tell somebody today, through the Word of God, that in your life the change that you seek is not out of your grasp. The healing that you seek is not out of your grasp. The blessing that you are after, that you have pursued for years, is not out of your grasp. Can you say amen? No, because all God has to do in your life is breathe. For your life to change and be transformed. All God has to do is breathe and say, let there be light. For the darkness to be erased from your mind. All God has to do is breathe. I want to remind you today that all is required is the breath of God in your life. When God told Ezekiel in, in, in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, and he brought him to a valley of dry bones, he said, Ezekiel, uh, can these bones live? And Ezekiel had to answer a question, and he had to say, God, do I believe that they can live, or am I just going to believe they're going to continue to be a dead, dry pile of bones? And the Lord is asking you the same question in the Ark of Peru today. Can these bones live? Is my breath enough? Do you believe that all that is required for this thing to live and for that thing to live in your life is my breath? Ezekiel, John, can the bones live? George, can the bones live? Billy, can the bones live? Bill King, can the bones live? Because all God has to do is breathe and the bones will live. All God had to do was speak and His breath touched the waters and the chaos began to come together and creation happened. All He had to do was breathe. And the same thing in your life. All God has to do is breathe. But He asks you a question. Can the bones live and is my breath enough? We sang the song in this place today and I had no idea we were going to sing this song. It's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs we inhale God and so we exhale praise <laughs> God took in all that chaos and he exhaled life he exhaled out of himself in creation came forth. The waters began to bring life forth with the Word. And I come to ask you the question, is His breath enough? Do you believe in the house today? Do you believe that all He has to do in your life is breathe? That all He has to do to change your situation is breathe on you and you will be transformed? I'm reminded of the creation of the man in Genesis chapter 2 at the end of the sixth day when there was a formed man made of clay and earth and the mist that came up out of the ground uh, maybe uh, created clay and moisture into that clay. And I can see the hands of God forming this 
this man, but the man is still dead. He's not alive because God had not yet breathed into his situation. God had not yet breathed into his lungs the breath of life, and he had not yet become a living soul. But when God exhaled, That form became a man. And God said, this is in my image. All God has to do to bring about His image in your life is to breathe on you. See, His breath will transform every cell of your being. His breath will transform any part of you that needs transforming and fixing. His breath will fix your breathing problems, your sickness. His breath will fix your, your stomach problems, your back problems. All He has to do is breathe in your life. It's that easy. He's that close. But the question is, are you going to inhale when He breathes? When God breathes, something is to take place, but are you going to inhale? When we were singing in this place, God was breathing on us. You couldn't sing His praises unless He first breathed into you and put it in you that you could exhale His praises. You can only exhale after you've inhaled. That's why some of us don't have a life of praise and a life of worship and a life of adoration and thankfulness unto God because we're not inhaling enough. So therefore, since we're not inhaling enough, we're not exhaling enough. And the cycle of breathing, which is autonomous, is not, is not happening as it should because we don't inhale and therefore we don't exhale. Before you can exhale God, you've got to inhale God. It's that simple and easy. You want to heal the sick? You want to heal your sick child? You need to inhale God so you can exhale God. Uh, you want your marriage to work and your marriage to be healed? You need to inhale God so you can exhale His love. His forgiveness. His spirit of unity. And it's not happening a lot of times because you're not inhaling Him. When all God wants you to do is take a big old deep breath of Him and trust Him that when you breathe Him in, that you will take in everything that is necessary to bring about the change you need for the situation that you're facing. It's right there, but you have to inhale Him before you can exhale Him. Before you can say, receive you the Holy Ghost, you got to inhale so He can come out of you and you can exhale. You follow? It's amazing how the natural functions of life <laughs> reflect what happens in the Spirit. Because what was spirit became life. What was God's breath became light and spoke and separated light from darkness. It's that easy. But before light could be put into darkness, God had to first exhale. He had to draw from His self. That's what He did. He drew from Himself. And when he exhaled out of himself, then there was light. There was the perfect representation, the perfect solution, the perfect ingredients all in one package that the earth needed to bring forth life. That's what God exhaled. It's the same thing. When you get the Holy Ghost... When you receive the baptism of the Spirit, the perfect package of grace, of mercy, of peace, of what you need to keep you, what you need to sustain you, what you need to heal you, what you need to change your life is what God exhales into you when you inhale Him. And then what comes out of you is God. 
Because you breathe, what you breathe in comes out. It's a complete cycle. What is the first reaction after you take a breath and inhale? It's to exhale. <laughs> and why are some of us feeling tired? We're not inhaling enough of God so we can exhale and bring life out of what we inhale. And so, therefore, we're tired, we're worn out, not specifically speaking of myself, but people are tired, they're worn out, because they're not inhaling enough, and therefore, what they're exhaling is not God, it's of themselves. Your own breath will only sustain you so long before there has to be a change. The buildup of carbon dioxide in your blood has to be exhaled and you have to take in fresh oxygen in order to complete the cycle and to breathe one more breath to stay alive. Well, that's the problem. Many in the church, they're not inhaling Him. They don't praise Him when it's praise and worship time because they're not inhaling Him. They don't pray to Him because they're not inhaling Him. They don't heal the sick. They sit around and they feel not used. They feel like their purpose is not being met because they're not inhaling God. And therefore, because they're not inhaling God, they're not exhaling God. It's the same concept when we take in the blood and the body or the bread and the wine. We take in God's body. It becomes part of our DNA. Christ is formed in us. We take in His, the wine, His blood. It becomes part of our blood. His living blood. His blood that did not bring death, that had no corruption in it, that could not coagulate, that could not be guilty of anything. It was free. It was sinless. It was spotless blood. It was living blood. We take that in. That becomes part of us. Therefore, what comes out of us is life. What comes out of us, what shows out of us is the DNA of Jesus Christ, is the life of Jesus Christ. But if we fail to take in the elements, the blood, the body, the bread, and the wine, we lack that DNA. We lack that healing. We lack that thing that would come out of us after we partook first. So some of you aren't getting what you're, what you're searching for in life because you're not taking in enough. You're trying to exhale. You're trying to command the darkness to leave your life. You're trying to command the anxiety to leave your scared child. You're trying to command the healing to come on your spouse and to, to take over your spouse's body that's been ravaged with sickness or your brother or your sister or anybody else, but you're not inhaling enough. So therefore, there's uh, what's coming out is not adequate for that healing, is not adequate for that deliverance, it's not adequate for the process to happen. But if you would just breathe, if you would just inhale God, all He has to do in your life, one breath can change everything. One breath of God breathed, and the disciples and the 120 that were in the upper room that filtered out into the temple, one breath of God changed their lives forever. One breath of God breathed down and brought the winds into those bones and began to form out of bones a whole complete human army. In Ezekiel 37, one breath of God did that. One breath of God can change and is waiting to change your situation and change the, the circumstances in your life, but you've got to inhale Him when He breathes 
And the problem is we're not inhaling him like he wants us to inhale him. So therefore, we're not exhaling healing. We're not exhaling deliverance. We're not exhaling liberty because we don't inhale him enough. When the formula is so simple, all we have to do is let him breathe on us. Breathe on us. There was a song that used to be sung that I used to love. It said, breathe on me. Breathe on me. Holy Ghost power, breathe on me. Yesterday's gone. But today, right now, right now, December, at the Ark of Peru, I need you to breathe on me. Because I do believe the bones can live. I do believe this they can become a mighty army. I do believe the children can be set free from anxiety and fear and doubt. I do believe that lives can be changed. That the liberty that is to the prisoner can be realized. I do believe. Therefore, all we need is one breath of God to blow on us and change us completely. One breath of God, one exhale of God is all it took to take those chaotic elements that made up the earth and bring life. And one breath of God is all you need in your life for everything to change and for you to change and for you to never be the same again and for your family to never be the same again. It's just one breath of God. And all he has to do is breathe on you. All you have to let Him do is breathe into you and you will exhale automatically the praise and the glory of God. All you have to do is let Him breathe into you and your DNA can be changed. It's that simple. We're not the same when we don't breathe. The sickness that has been ravaging the world and to some degree more in others than, uh, to more of a degree in some than others, affects the very breath that uh, a person is able to, to, to take in and to inhale and to exhale. It actually goes deeper than that. It goes into the veins and the arteries. And it creates clots to where life-giving oxygen cannot be circulated throughout the body. Therefore, the lungs don't work the way they're supposed to do. Uh, they're supposed to. The systems of the body don't work like they're supposed to. And a person slowly dies. And this is a tool of the enemy. This is a devil. It's a creation of man. It's not a creation of man. If it's a manipulation of what was already in existence through modern day technology, but it has been dedicated to the working of Satan. Because the thief comes to steal and to kill and destroy. He comes to steal your life. He comes to steal your possessions. He comes to destroy your life. Steal your possessions. Destroy everything that God has placed in your life to bless you and to bless others. The structures that He has placed in your life. He comes to take all those things. So this, this sickness is, is a devil and it affects the way people breathe. It affects the amount of oxygen the blood can transport throughout the body. It's no wonder if all God has to do is breathe and life takes place. Exhale and life can take place. Exhale in you and breath can come into your body. It's no wonder that Satan would choose the very thing that robs people of that life-giving breath and that keeps the blood from flowing because there is no life without the blood. His life is carried in His blood. His life is carried in His blood and from that living blood He breathes into our lives and gives us what we need to live 
It's no wonder that this tool of Satan would rob the very breath that people experience in this earth. But thanks be to God that the only breath that I breathe does not come from an earthly source. Thanks be to God that the breath that I breathe is a breath from heaven. Thanks be to God. He gives me the victory and He allows me to inhale Him. And when the devil and when his adversaries say, you're going to be sick, no, no, I have life. You're not going to be able to breathe. We're going to take away your ability to speak. No, I have life. He gave me my language. He gave me my breath. He gave me my body. You can't take away what God has already given me. Thanks be to God that my breath, the the life in me, does not come from an earthly source. Or I would be, of all men, most miserable and a dead man walking. You would be a dead man, a dead woman walking without the breath of God in your life. And you wouldn't be saved without the blood in the body of Jesus Christ. And you wouldn't have life without the blood because the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood and the blood carries oxygen and the oxygen is what is breathed out of Him. It becomes your source of sustainment to keep you breathing, to keep you going, to keep you and me walking that road one step after another. One step after another, it comes from Him. And all He had to do was just breathe on us to allow us to have that freedom and liberty. That's it. That's all you need. You just need God to breathe in your life. Your blessing can be realized if God just breathes on you. The life that you are looking for, the completeness you're looking for, it's found in Him. All He has to do is breathe and and you will never be the same again. Adam was never the same again when he took that first breath. The 120 in the upper room were never the same again when they breathed in what came from the mighty, mighty rushing wind from on high. The apostles were never the same again when he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. It is my breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So because of your breath, I pour out my praise. And if I don't have anything to pour out, it's because I'm not breathing in what I need to breathe in so he can pour it out of me. When I receive the Holy Spirit, when I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's because I'm breathing Him in. I'm taking Him in. My bones don't live. There's no life if I don't breathe. You want your church to to change, start breathing Him in more. Quit trying to live your life on your own and think you can sustain yourself because you cannot sustain yourself. You do not have the necessary elements in yourself alone to sustain life. How many of y'all been uh, ever been scuba diving? Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. If you know what breathing compressed air is, you've been scuba diving. It's an experience. But there is only so much available in that tank in that breathing apparatus that will sustain you with the mixture of other gases for you to be in that environment that you were not created to live in. See, he he created the waters for the fish and the whales and frogs. He didn't create the waters for the human. 
We have to breathe air. So if you are going to go into that environment, you have to have a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus on or have access to the oxygen in the air. And if you have a scuba tank on, there's only so much air in that scuba tank. And if you're not careful, you don't pay attention, you run out of air, the toxic gases build up in your body, and therefore you will suffocate and die underwater. Because you don't have it on your own. You lack in yourself the ability to breathe underwater. It's the same in the Spirit. You lack on your own the ability to breathe in the Spirit. You have to inhale so you can exhale and the cycle can be complete because if you don't, that's when you start to die. Hold your breath for too long. Hold your breath and do not breathe, and you'll notice some things start to happen. Panic sets in. And some people, they can control their panic. But you'll eventually pass out because you're not getting the oxygen that is necessary to complete the systems and the functions in your body that are required for you to live. It's the same way in the spirit. And many are not accessing the things that God has given them in the Spirit because they are not inhaling properly and breathing cycle is not being completed. When all God has to do is just breathe and you to inhale Him and then you'll exhale whatever He breathes into you. The breath of life. And what will come out of you is life. And what will come out of you is, is, is something that is good for the environment, for your situation, and for everyone around you. And a lot of people are bad for the situation. They're bad for the environment. And they're bad to everybody around them because what they're breathing out is putrid, toxic, junk, because they're not inhaling right. They're not inhaling of the things of the Spirit. They're not inhaling His love and His mercy and His grace. Therefore, love and mercy and grace is not coming out of them. They're not inhaling His glory, so the praises of God are not coming out of them. And they wonder why their life is incomplete. And they wonder why I go to church, why my life is incomplete, because I'm not breathing out what I should be, because I'm not taking in what I should be. You will only exhale what you inhale. And you will only become what you behold. But if you could just get this principle And realize and know that all God has to do is breathe on you for everything to be different in your life. You can walk away different from this place and you will never be the same again. (laughs) That's all you got to do. You got to inhale. When he's, his spirit is flowing in this place. Last week we talked about and the things we saw happening in the, in the spirit when worship was going forth. That's when Yolanda got the Holy Ghost. Praise God, he's filling the children with the Holy Ghost. And began to see the crosswinds of the spirit blowing. And they were covering from, from the front to the back in lines. They were like currents of wind. And then they were coming from this direction too. And they were meeting together and forming little tornadoes. And on those little tornadoes were like fire. But not everybody was getting it because not everybody was breathing in. Not everybody was opening up. We talked about the well being clogged up. Not everyone's well was free flowing. And God couldn't pull that water up out of himself because they weren't breathing it in. They weren't breathing in. The current of God was flowing. The tornado, the whirlwind of God was churning. But people weren't being changed because they were not participating with God in it. They weren't breathing in. They they weren't allowing water to come out of their well. So therefore, they walked away unchanged, unmoved. I'm just another church service. (laughs) 
And they didn't realize that the living God, the living Christ, the living God that breathed the breath of life, that spoke light in the darkness, that spoke light in the word into chaos, that brought about something out of chaotic nothing, was breathing and blowing over them. And wanting to catch them up. And wanting to take out of the reservoir inside of them that water so we could rain it back down. It's a cycle. Unless God comes in, you don't have anything to give out. Unless God pours in, you will not have rain to pour out. The water won't come out of those wells unless it's first drawn up by the Spirit. So if you don't breathe God in, you won't exhale God. If you don't breathe in God's truth, you won't exhale healing. You won't exhale the Word of God. If you do not breathe in faith, you will not exhale the works of faith. Mark my words. Faith without works is dead, being alone. Well, I have faith and I believe. The devils believe too. They're just wicked and doing their own thing because that's their nature. At least God gave you another nature, and he said, your faith is dead when it's alone, but if it has works, then it's good faith. So if you're not breathing in faith, the breath of God, you're not going to breathe out the works of faith, and you will lack in your life. I will lack in my life. And the question was posed to Ezekiel in the 37th chapter. I I go to this verse a lot that uh, can these bones live? And Ezekiel, he gets a little, I think he's a little cocky. With He says, I don't know, you tell me, God, can they? <laughs> well, obviously, God, you have something in mind or you wouldn't ask me this question. He's saying, no, Ezekiel, I want to know, can these bones live? Do you believe? they can live. I know they can live, Ezekiel. I know I control the wind, Ezekiel, but do you believe it? So God is asking you the question, do you believe when you inhale, he's going to, you're going to exhale what, you, what God wanted out of your life all along? So he, so he says to Ezekiel in, in the ninth verse, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. All it took for the slain to live was for the man of God to prophesy and say, let there, just like God, let there be light. Let there be light. And the light was separating from the darkness. Right then and there it happened. All it took was for God to breathe when the man of God prophesied and said these bones can live and to come from the four winds. Bring the miracles. Bring the healing. Bring the law of God. Bring the judgments of God. Bring the peace of God. Bring it, Lord! Come from the four winds and breathe upon these slain that they may live. That's all it took was one breath of God controlling the winds and this mighty army was filled with life. And bones became humans. And bones became an army. And they stood up and God said, this is the whole house of Israel. These are the ones who are princes who have power with God, and that's all it took was the breath of God and the man of God proclaiming the breath of God over those people. And when he did that, (laughs) verse 10, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them. It wasn't what I wanted to say. No, because when you breathe in, you inhale God. You don't breathe out and exhale what you want to say or what you think you should say. What you exhale is completely divine. It's what He commanded Him to say. And they lived and stood upon their feet in exceeding great army. 
I like this in verse 11. These bones are now W-H-O-L-E, whole. And the answer to the wholeness that many of you lack is, is in breathing in God and letting Him breathe in your life. And then you will exhale what He has breathed into you. And it will be everything that you need, everything that your family needs, everything that needs to happen, it will come out. And you will become that whole person that you were created to be. God's intention was always to make the earth after Him, after His way. It was never His intention for there to remain chaos or else He wouldn't have hovered over the face of the waters. I can imagine, I can just, I feel God, He's hovering over the face of the waters. And He's looking down at what He had made beautiful at one time and it has become formless and void. And God said, I've got to do something about this. God wants to breathe on you more than you want to inhale Him. He wants to bless you more than you want His blessing. He wants to favor you more than you want His favor. He wants to give life to you more than you desire life. It is true that you cannot outgive God, and God wants to give more than you expect and more than you want to receive, but you have to be the one who will say, yes, I will breathe you in. Yes, I'm going to inhale. Yes, I'm going to let you come into me. Yes, I'm going to let myself become a free-flowing vessel of praise and worship and adoration and prayer and thanksgiving and holiness unto the Lord. All it takes is one breath. And then in verse 12, <laughs> now the exceeding great army stood up. Bones have become humans. Bones have been infused with supernatural life. This is clearly a miracle in, in time. It's, it's, you can't even describe what what is happening? I, I can imagine being Ezekiel. <laughs> I'm watching bones live. And God said, all you got to do is speak the words I tell you to speak. And all you got to do is say, these bones can live. And I'll give you my breath and what you will exhale will be the necessary elements for all these bones to come alive. And they, this has happened. And here we are in verse 12. <laughs> I will open your graves. And I'm going to come bring you out of your grave. See, see, these were bones, and they were living in a dead state. They were in a grave. They'd been left there, and that had become their resting place. But when the breath of God blew upon those bones, something happened. And now God said, I'm not just going to leave you in the valley. I'm not just going to leave you where I found you. I breathed on you. I gave you life. I made you a living being. I made you a great army. I made you whole. And now I'm going to take Take you out of that place that was a graveyard and I'm going to turn you and give you something else and I will you'll come out of your graves and I'll bring you into the land of Israel I will bring you into the land of the princes who have power with God <laughs> and all it took was him to breathe all it took was him to say, receive you, the Holy Ghost. <sighs> All it took was one breath of God that touched the elements in the earth and caused life to spring forth out of death. <laughs> Turned graves into a land where there was princes who had power with God. Turned bones into armies. Just with one breath. One blast. And the same thing can happen in your life in this place today. The same thing can happen in your dry womb today. The same thing can happen in this situation economically in your life today. In your finances. Finances aren't everything, but finances reflect some things in the spirit. The same thing can happen in your body ravaged by sickness today. The same thing can happen in your family today. <laughs> and 
And I'm just the man of God that can stand up and say, can, these bones can live. And I prophesy to the north wind. I prophesy to the east wind, the south wind, and the west wind to come together and breathe upon those that are slain and let them live in the name of Jesus. Let marriages be put back together and live. Let families be put back together and live. Let children be healed and live. Let bodies ravaged by sickness live. Let churches that were broken up and pastors who were broken down live. And breathe upon that which the enemy had left for dead. You see, the bones in Ezekiel 37 were always an army, but the state they were in did not reflect their status as an army. (laughs) They had been in a valley and in a battle. And they wasted away, they were slain, something happened, but then they became a dead army. And the creatures of the night the coyotes and the foxes and the vultures of the day and the beetles that began to eat away those once living beings until years later there was nothing left but but dry bones. See, they were an army that was in a fight at one time, and they had become slain and were left there for dead. And I come to tell you today that the thing that the the enemy in your life has convinced you is left for dead, it shall live. It shall live, but it hinges upon your ability to inhale the breath of God and exhale the healing, the work, the liberty, the life of God into that thing. See, it just doesn't happen unless you prophesy into it and say it shall live. It doesn't happen unless you let God breathe on it. It will not happen unless you do your part. It's God who creates the sinews. It's God who creates the, the skin and, and the eyeballs and the ears and, and, all, and the brain and everything that the body needs to live. It's God who does that, but it's you who inhales Him. It's you who speaks the Word. It's you who inhales God and breathes out God. It's your responsibility. If you want it to live, it is your responsibility. In the name of Jesus. If you want your church to live. (laughs) Inhale God and exhale. God's power and blessings in life. If you want your marriage to live. Inhale God's love and forgiveness. His commitment to you. His committed love. See we're not committed enough. That's why love is far from a feeling. Because when God felt like letting you be destroyed because of your wickedness, He felt like wiping Israel off the face of the map. He looked back and remembered His commitment to them. Hallelujah. (laughs) And His love was perfect love. And it manifested perfectly because he lived committed love. God is love. If you want your marriage to be healed, you want your family to be healed, you breathe in God's love, God's commitment, God's grace, and God's mercy, and you exhale it. You want your church to live, you breathe in God's love, God's mercy, God's grace. You exhale it, God's power, and then you exhale it. You want want the ministry that God gives you to take 
to take flight. You, wanna, you want that thing that you felt like was dead, laying in a valley, dried up. You breathe the breath of God. You inhale God, and you let Him exhale over it and watch it change. But it doesn't happen unless you prophesy, unless you do the work that is required for that thing to live. And, and it's not really work. All you have to do is breathe. And that's all it takes is one breath of God. One breath of God! And you will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Stand across this building. There is hope for a tree if it has roots. If it's just a stump but it has roots, there's hope for it. And there is hope for the bones in your life to live. <laughs> Because they are exposed to the wind of God. And when the wind of God blows, life happens. Won't you claim that promise today? Won't you claim that promise today? But on top of claiming that promise, be willing to be that vessel who breathes in and inhales God and exhales the work of God. The peace of God, the liberty of God, the life of God. Inhale, exhale. It's autonomous. It's a natural cycle. It's a natural cycle. In Jesus' name.
I want us to do something. Keep playing. I want you to take a big old deep breath of God. I want you to, your mind, your connection to God. He'll show you dreams, visions, manifestations, and revelations of Himself in, in here. And here. But I want you to take in a big breath. I want you to dedicate this breath to the Lord. I want you to speak out and say, I am breathing in the substance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you were in the heavenly realm, you would literally breathe in God. You wouldn't breathe in oxygen, you'd breathe in God. And I know that from personal experience. You would breathe in God's essence, His everything. So when you take this deep breath and you say, I'm literally breathing in the substance, the life of Jesus Christ. I want you to put on that thing whatever the Lord tells you, you need to breathe in. If it's joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Say, I'm breathing in joy, the substance of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's given me the oil of joy for mourning. If you want to praise Him, <laughs> I'm breathing in the substance of the Lord Jesus Christ, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You need peace. Those who have peace are those who have his, their mind stayed on Him. There's a constant, consistent breathing in that allows the mind to be transformed and stayed on Him. And the peace of God. Breathe it in. Whatever the Lord tells you, whatever He wants to put on it. Say, so I am breathing this in. I'm breathing in your blessing so I can be a blessing. I'm breathing, breathing in your life so I can speak life. I am breathing in your hope so I can speak and I can live and look forward in hope. breath of God in this place. These bones can live. And they live right now. Everywhere the river flows, there's life. And everywhere the wind blows, <laughs> it pulls up the water and brings the rain. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. I speak life to those churches who've fallen by the wayside. And I stand up here as a voice, <laughs> a prophetic voice in this in this hour, I speak life to those places. Life into those bones. Life into that which was dead. A committed love into that which knew not committed love. And healing to those vessels. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak life into the music of this church, into the worship of this church, the praises in this church. I speak the life and the breath of God. I speak life into the the, the teachers and the teaching that is going on in the children's ministry and the youth and adolescent ministry. I speak life into that. That thing shall live. That thing shall live and it will be a praise and a glory to God in the earth. And there will be more children. More children filled with the baptism of the Spirit. I speak life into these waters of baptism. I speak life into those who are cast down because of sickness and bodily uh, functions that don't work the way they used to work. I speak life to the heart. I speak life to the bones. I speak life in the mind. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak life. Therefore, light has come and the darkness cannot comprehend it. I speak light. Let there be light. name of Jesus Christ. Break the back of the covens of witchcraft in this town. And do it by your blood. I speak life. Reveal yourself to those people who are seeking the spirit realm but they are seeking the wrong way and going through the wrong door. Reveal yourself to them, Lord. Just like you're revealing yourself to the Muslims in the Middle East. And you're appearing to them and showing them that you love them. And there's revival going on. Do that, Lord. And those who have put their hand to do witchcraft and forgive them of their sins. Lead them to repentance, Lord. Oh, God, disturb their sleep until they change. And every child that is a victim of of trafficking in any form or fashion, speak life to them. And to their captors, you have to release the children. You must release the children in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, church, repeat that after me. You must release the children in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. make those children who've been broken, abused, and battered like the clay on the potter's wheel and raise up those bones, that which was left for dead in the valley of despair. (laughs) Raise them up a mighty army in your army in this end time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Raise them up, Lord. Yahweh, raise them up! Raise up politicians that will follow the principles of the Word of God and they will be endued with power from on high and the Spirit of God will rest on them and they will walk and they will make laws and they will govern righteously. Raise up Joseph's and Cyrus's Josiah's and Solomon's before his heart was turned. And David's, Lord. Raise up the Boazes that are willing to wait on the Lord until God's promise comes. Hallelujah. And make them wealthy and make them wise. Wisdom above wealth, but the wisdom to gain wealth. Raise up 
those who will call upon the name of the Lord who are willing to bring the firstlings of their fruit. Raise up the sets and the ables who will call upon the Lord. Raise up the Noahs who will find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Raise up Abrahams that are God's friend. Raise up Elishas who have the double portion. Raise up kings and priests, prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers, Peters and Pauls and Timothys and Johns and Polycarps. And those who will stand up against religious tradition like Martin Luther. Those who will be open and exposed and who will preach against darkness like Charles Spurgeon. Those who will stand up to say there is one God and one Christ. His name is Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, just like G.T. Haywood. Raise up the William Branhams and the A.A. Allens. Raise up the John G. Lakes that were willing to walk in plague infested areas and bring the healing and the life of God. And that dead thing could not touch them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Raise up the beloved physicians. Hallelujah. Raise up those who are willing to give all of their wealth into your kingdom, who are willing to stand upon the mountain of God and do things financially and economically God's way, your way, and not the way of Babylon and the way of this world and the form and the fashion of this world. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Raise up ministers in this church. Lord, let us not be the same when we walk away from this place. But as we breathe you in, oh God, breathe out of us and exhale everything that you have given us into the earth and into the people around us and into our families and into the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let these things be done according to the will and the way of the Lord in Yeshua's name. Amen. Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen in heaven and amen in the earth. Amen. That which is in heaven manifest in this earth.